lunar missions. There's been a lot of those, and there's still going to be a whole lot of those. The big one, of course, right now is the Chinese, Chang'e 6. It's the lunar lander that is going to the far side. Now, China had been to the far side before, but they didn't have a sample return mission. And they've done a sample return mission, but it was on the near side of the moon, easier to deal with. In this case, they just put it all together. They're doing far side of the moon and sample return. And they threw in a rover this time, too, which was nice because then they got a picture of the lander. Key thing is far side is more trouble. So one thing that meant was they had to get a satellite in place for communications, which they already did. They actually had one still up there, but they put a second one up just to make sure that they were covered on that. The stuff that's not as well highlighted there, that's stuff we talked about before. They have payloads from various other countries. Two kilograms of samples, that's what they're bringing back. There's an ascender on this thing. You have a picture of what it looks like here. This is actually the previous generation, the Chang'e 5. The ascender is the part that's up on the top there. Well, when it takes off, of course, that potentially could damage the lander. And it did in the last, in the number five. So it may damage it, it may not. But in any case, because they assumed it might damage it, they didn't bother putting radioisotope heaters in it like they did in some of the earlier missions. They had been on the far side before for like a year, and they had the radioisotope heaters to keep everything warm. They didn't do that here, so it's guaranteed to end the mission, even if it doesn't get destroyed earlier. And I have yet to find out whether the thing survived or whether it was partially damaged when they did the ascent. But obviously, they did the ascent. There was a question about the short-lived lander versus a stated 53-day mission. But that mission is to return the sample to Earth. It's not talking about the viability of this particular craft. It's done its job. They did all the sampling within two days, and then they launched the ascender to carry the samples back. So if you looked at that as the main part of the mission, what happened to this one afterwards didn't really matter. So this is what it looked like. They took a rover with them. So there's a rover that went out there and it got that picture. That rover was actually a bit of a surprise. They just noticed that in some pictures right before they took off. They actually had a small rover. I think that's why they wanted to get a good picture. You notice the Chinese flag there. They didn't actually plant one. It's uh, left-hand side there. It just is a little thing that pops out. But nonetheless, the Chinese flag has been shown on the far side of the moon. So in terms of the timeline then, the dark parts up above are things that have already happened. So what's new for this month is, well, first of all, lunar sunrise came. They were waiting for that. They were just orbiting the moon until the sunrise came. They landed June 1st. They took their samples. The samples are two kinds. They drilled down two meters, six feet, and then they also scooped some dirt from the top. So they had two different kinds of samples. They did all that in the first 48 hours. They took off on the third. The ascender went back up. And then they had to dock with the craft that they came from. It's called the orbiter. They dropped down to the moon. They had to shoot back up to that, link back up with it, and they did that. It was impressive that they even managed to do it at all when they get down to it. They pretty much had one shot at it. I mean, you know, the orbiter's up there. You go shooting by. You don't have that much fuel left on your cinder. If you miss, that's it. They didn't miss. They got it. And then you have to transfer the sample to it because they're going to get rid of the ascender. They don't need that if you go back to Earth. And that's what you're looking at in this hard-to-understand picture here. I think the upper one is probably the ascender, and the lower one is the orbiter. But anyway, they're pushing the sample from one to the other, and then they're going to discard the ascender, the thing that brought back from the moon, come back to Earth, and right, that should be about now. They probably are starting that. You know, maybe yesterday, maybe today. You don't get the news necessarily uh, instantly on these things. So anyway, pretty soon the thing will be going back to Earth. And even at that, at that point, they release a capsule, which contains the sample, and that'll just come down and land in Inner Mongolia, and then they'll pick it up. The orbiter itself is still up there, and will still have some fuel. So they're going to go off and they'll do other stuff, don't know what. They did that on the last sample return mission as well. If it's up there and it has fuel, they'll do something with it. What they did last time is they went to the Earth-Sun Lagrange point to look at that for a while. And then they came back to check out the orbit for what they used for their second satellite, which was the monitoring satellite, the communications relay. They made good use of it. Okay, on the other hand, finally, the Japanese Slim Lander, we talked about this before. Again, we, we've covered all the previous stuff that's kind of dark there. It's really dead now. He's dead, Jim. It's <laughs> finally... <laughs> but we have thought that before. Pretty much dead. This is the one that landed upside down and the solar cells were facing toward the west so they didn't get the morning sunshine. They only had a couple hours each day to do something. It finally stopped communicating. So we now think it probably really is truly dead. It may come back like a zombie one more time, but nobody thought it would come back three times, which it did. But now it's finally given up. If you don't have the radioisotope heaters, it's just hard to deal with the cold temperatures. Okay, another one, 
Dear Moon. Now, this mission is sponsored by a Japanese billionaire. A flight on Starship around the moon, making a couple loops and then just coming back. No landing, just making a loop around it. But this guy, he had kind of an artistic bent. He went up there with artists and internet influencers. So he wanted to popularize and see what the culture would do with going to the moon. He ran a contest. He had a million people apply to become part of this mission. That wasn't even done until 2022. But this guy was actually, in a sense, he was the first commercial Starship customer, even though Starship wasn't flying at the time. And he contributed quite a bit of money. I never saw the actual amount, but it was probably quite helpful in the early stages of Starship development. Anyway, he just pulled out of it. And what he said, which no doubt is true, is that, well, it's been disappointing. The schedule is too optimistic. Probably they wouldn't actually be able to do this mission until the 2030s. It's a little odd because that was obvious to everybody for a long period of time, including by 2022 when he finally selected his crew. He actually admitted he was sort of worried that all these people would not be happy. There's been speculation. You know, some people said, well, he's probably lost a lot of his wealth. Maybe he was bad investments. But just the end devaluation that's happened in the last couple of years is tremendous. It's gone from 110 yen to the dollar. Now we're down to 157 as of maybe a week or two ago. So that alone just cuts out your wealth if you're measuring it in dollars, which if you're a customer of Starship, you'd be measuring it in dollars. But the other thing is that if he had an itch to go to space, he got that scratch because he paid to go on a Russian Soyuz craft up to the International Space Station. He was there for 12 days. So he, at least by himself, at least has now been to space. So maybe that reduced some of the urgent need to, to feel like he had to go on his own lunar mission. From a SpaceX standpoint, really, they have a lot higher priorities to deal with and a lot more money coming in because of other missions. All the Starlink launches, they really need to get Starship going for that to start launching satellites at a much higher rate. And the bigger, heavier ones that they really want to launch. Oh, man, NASA's Artemis program. You know, they've really got to get that right. There's a lot of attention on that. So anyway, this mission is over. Other space-related videos or slide presentations by me are available at the link shown here. That includes a list of videos at my YouTube channel, so you can view them or subscribe for notifications about future videos. These presentations are mostly made as part of the meetings of National Space Society's North Houston chapter, and the link to that is shown. Topics like these are presented as part of a monthly news segment, and there are also lots of other interesting speakers and open discussions. You can attend in person or online via Zoom. Come join us.